Good afternoon. My name is Piotr Maderski. I come from Poznan University of Life Sciences, Department of Forest Utilization at the Faculty of Forestry. I'm uh, very pleased to be second time here at this conference. I'm very pleased to be uh, in Latvia and especially in Daugav Pils. Uh, to come to Daugav Pils, you have to have a concrete reason. So uh, it's the more nice to see also other travelers also in Daugav Pils. Uh, I want to start my presentation with a, a reference to the previous one. Torsten, congratulations for the beautiful speech. That was, uh, you know, uh, easy to get involved in it. Uh, I, I would like to ask, uh, I have quite a few friends in Germany and we deal with forest operations. Uh, if you could help me, uh, do you have any requirements in Germany in terms of uh, strip roads, skid roads in the forest in Germany, in terms of distance between strip roads? I wouldn't know. We would have to ask our <coughs> Oh, okay. Uh, my, my presentation is, um, is uh, uh, linked directly to economic uh, aspects of forest operations and certain difficulties we have once we employ uh, machines uh, such as harvesters and forwarders, expensive machines. Yes, the, the, when I talk about forest operations, um, uh, I, when I start this discussion, and also I want to try it here, um, the competition is very high, first of all. The machines are very expensive and very productive. Yeah, the, I mean, a good uh, forest uh, enterprise should harvest about 30,000 cubic meters a year. Yeah. If you earn 0.3 euro on cubic meter, you have um, 10,000 euro surplus. But if you make mistake and you only miss 30 euro cents on one cubic meter, then you've got 10,000 euro under the budget. And this, this competition is very high. That's why I would like to present that to, to, to focus on how, in how competitive world we live now in terms of uh, forest enterprises. But there is some uh, issue um, a link to um, environmental aspects and uh, it's, it's related to the question I raised to Torsten. Uh, and the question is what density of strip roads we should have in the forest that is economically Mm, uh, acceptable, but also environmentally friendly, let's say. Um, it is easy to, to, to harvest trees with machines uh, in mature stands. Yeah? The trees have large sizes. The, the, the bigger trees, the, the easy economy. Yeah? You, you, you get uh, a productivity of harvest uh, reaching 50 cubic meters an hour today with a very well trained operator and a good harvester. And um, if you earn, I don't know, you get 10 euros uh, per one cubic meter, and you calculate by 50, then you have uh, 500, uh, five, uh, 50 cubic meters, 10 euro, 500 euros an hour yeah, income. Well, you have to pay the cost, but, but still it's easy. Cubic meters of single tree, they make productivity, it's a well paid job. But, the problem is when you go to the stand like this, it's a 31-year-old pine forest, yeah? picture taken from Poland. And uh, now, with the small trees, the economy is a little bit more um, uh, accurate, it's a little bit more uh, uh, precious. What's the context? The context is that uh, uh, we also face another problem when we employ uh, small machines in the forest, in terms of distance between strip roads. <laughs> The standard expectation is to have uh, the distance between strip, strip roads around 20 meters. But then when you have 20 meters, the machine should have a crane about 10 meters. This small machine has a width, 1.8 meters. It cannot have a crane 10 meters because it will, uh, it will um, uh, tip on the ground. Yeah. It is, it cannot, we cannot get physical stability at this moment with this machine, with such a long crane. So the crane of this machine is, is uh, around five meters and there's a problem, yeah? because if we have a crane of five meters, we theoretically we should have strip roads every 10 meters in the forest. Will we accept that? Would we like to have a forest cut every 10 meters with a little strip road? Well, maybe we can, but then we, we have to uh, expect certain cons consequences of that. Of that. Um, 
so this is the this is the content of the presentation basically. But yeah, but the, the, the main context of this is to how to uh, how to try make make a strip roads every 20 meters having a machine with uh, five meters crane. So the objective of this research was to find out what distance between strip roads and technological solutions of timber harvesting will impact on productivity and cost of thinning operations. So basically this is the, the uh, I'm a little bit stubborn, I want to have 20 meters between strip roads, but what about money? 20 meters, by the way. Thank you, good. I like it. This is a good support for this presentation. Um, yes, and as I said, young stand doesn't give very big, big productivity. Each stem has to go through the harvest ahead, takes time, and the very small uh, uh, amount of cubic meters we get in, in return. You have on the, on the right side of, this, uh, of the slide, there is also a little forwarder, maybe three uh, cubic meters of not solid wood, but cubic meter of a bark with air uh, capacity. And uh, on the left side is a harvester. So what's the, what was the, uh, what options did we uh, design? The first option is that we, we want to have uh, 20 meters. We would like to have a 20 meters between strip roads, which is from the middle to the middle of the strip road, yes. But as I mentioned, the, the, the crane is five meters, yes. So we have a, we call it midfield. It's like a dead, dead field at the moment, that the machine hasn't got a chance to reach it. So we decided to cut the trees with a chainsaw and fell to the direction of the nearest strip road. How is the, uh, the process designed? First, the chainsaw operator comes here cut the trees and fells them to the sides. Then second harvester comes. The first um, job is to cut the trees next to the strip road, process the timber, get logs, and then pull these trees over the strip road and harvester works as a processor, only does the, the limbing and uh, cutting the assortments. Second option is when we have a first is a harvester, comes to the forest and takes the, does the thinning on this five meters zone next to the strip road. Then the chainsaw operator comes and he fells the tree to the sides. What's the benefit of that? The chainsaw operator, he sees exactly eh, what zone he's got to work on. Because already it, it was done here by harvester on both sides. So he doesn't hesitate, or shall I cut this tree in here and fell it towards the harvester, or shall I leave it because the machine will reach it? This dilemma is uh, taken away in this option. However, we had the first pass of harvester, then the chainsaw operator, operator comes, and then is a the second pass of harvester. We can guess what it means about the costs. And the third option is the not very welcomed option in terms of uh, environmental issues. We drive with the machines, both machines, harvest and forwarder, every 10 meters, because that's the reach of the crane of the machine. Okay, let's, let's see what happens uh, in terms of, uh, of productivity and uh, benefits, surplus, losses, and all of this lucrative <coughs> business. So first of all, I, I would like to share information about productivity. This, this little machine in this little um, uh, forest, a young forest, got the uh, productivity presented on the uh, green bar. And we have uh, around, basically, uh, around uh, five cubic meters an hour. There, there are certain differences, as you can, you can see, quite particular ones. But it's always uh, uh, below. Uh, this, oh, sorry, the first bar is uh, an average mean productivity for both machines. So, yeah, uh, 4.8, 4.5, 4.5. Uh, but uh, uh, what's more specific in this case is that the, you can uh, have a look at the forward productivity. Case, 
one and two, that is uh, significantly higher than the productivity of forward uh, when we had the strip roads every 10 meters. Yes, this is the direct result of the concentration of timber after the cutting, because we take the timber from a wider zone of 20 meters instead of 10 meters. And what's happened about the costs? The, unfortunately for us, for, 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 for forest operation people, the um, uh, operation with uh, employment of harvest and forward uh, was the cheapest, and this is the price in euro. It's uh, a little bit below 14 euros per, cu per cubic meter for both machines. Uh, and the second, let's say, second best option is the option with uh, one harvester pass and uh, employment of uh, cutting the trees with a chainsaw. Yeah? This, the high price comes from the extra employment of the chainsaw operator. He, he only cuts the trees and fells the tree. He doesn't do the limbing, he doesn't uh, cross-cut, he doesn't produce his assortments. So the job is relatively click, uh, quick. It's, uh, let's say, per cubic meter of the final assortment is uh, relatively cheap, but still uh, the productivity of these uh, machines couldn't earn because of the distance between strip roads as much to compete with the, the cheapest option. And the two harvest uh, passes made the price nearly 17 euros. Here, here below you have the prices of uh, um, payment that was paid by the uh, forest owner. So basically speaking, the forest owner pays nearly 19 euros per cubic meter. So if you compare with these prices, you can still see that uh, that's what was paid by the forest owner to the forest uh, enterprise. There is a still a, a difference between uh, the income and the cost of the machine, but the, 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 uh, the difference is very small. Yeah? That's what I started with. The, the calculation nowadays is very accurate. However, uh, it's a good of for forest owner in this case, because uh, the one cubic meter of the pulp wood that was obtained in this forest is about uh, 36 euros. Yeah? So it's still quite beneficial for the forest owner in the end when he sells the timber. It's a bit cheaper if we have a fewer wood at the end. And uh, what I would like to add is uh, some information about the strip roads, but this calculation is very simple. Yeah? If, we, if we have uh, strip roads every 10 meters, it's about 30% of the area uh, taken from um, utilization of the forest. So basically we cut one row of the tree every 10 meters. And if we do it every 20 meters, we exclude from utilization only 15% of the forest. What's the, well, what's, the, well, what's the conclusion in this? Well, the conclusion is that, as Copernicus' law says, uh, bad money replaces from the market the good money. Yeah? The, the cheapest, it doesn't mean it's the best, basically speaking. Yeah? If, we, if, we, if we pay extra 13% to the uh, forest uh, enterprise, we can kind of convince him to use the, uh, the first option of this operation, that we have a strip roads every 20 meters. We have general acceptance, because this is the general requirement, and we pay a little bit more money, but we, we have a forest in, a, let's say, a acceptable conditions. And the, the total area under the strip roads is 15%, not 30%. So we're happy with it. But, uh, what I would like to um, focus on is also the general uh, attitude of a society that I'm facing at the moment, that harvesters and forwarders are so-called heavy machinery entering the forest. Yes, they are heavy. And I would say, and? <laughs> what's, what's happened then? Um, they are heavier than chainsaw, yes. but. Will everyone understand uh, who is dealing with different subject than forestry that chainsaw, uh, chainsaw emission of noise is 107 decibels in scale A? Difficult. And the acceptable level of noise is 85 decibels in the scale A. And the noise level, the, the Enlargement of the noise level is a logarithmic function 
which means that if we add from 85 to 88 decibels, the noise is doubled. And people working with chainsaw with the light machinery are exposed to this uh, level of noise. If I say that society that the, um, the level of um, vibration of the chainsaw is about 14 square meters per second, will people understand that? That the chainsaw operators, they suffer with the uh, joints from vibrations from the chainsaws that are very difficult to uh, limit. It's probably difficult, we can try. Yes. But this heavy machinery, what I want to show at the, at the end, uh, by the way, this is the, the um, uh, publication which uh, gives a lot of details about this uh, research we have done. But I would like to focus rather on the, on the stand. This is the view of the, of the forest stand after a little bit more than half a year. Now, what you can see in here, I would, I would like to tell you, can you see here any sign of a strip road? Here, uh, the, this is a different stand to the one I presented at the beginning. Here was used a uh, large harvester. Uh, 15 tons, don't want to say the, the mark without marketing during this conference. And uh, four water of weight uh, 12, 13 tons with capacity of 10 tons. So, uh, fully loaded four water, the weight of this machine was 23, 24 tons. And these machines were driving several times on this, on the, on this plot. And uh, I'll tell you, the, the, the strip road was here. Oh, I have to go <laughs> to the front. The strip road was, the, the right wheel was going this way here. Yes, so you have an undisturbed area, let's say, here and disturbed area here. Maybe you can see some difference, but it's very small. This is the, let's say, um, a re reaction of the soil after the, the harvesting was in uh, July 2017, and this picture is taken in April 2018, this year. More detailed pictures. I mean, the, the difference, I was on this, uh, on this plot after the harvesting. I saw, directly after harvesting, I saw the, the difference. There was a, a little bit of rot seen. But uh, after eight months, difficult. Very detailed research, we were taking sample of soils to check if there is a soil compaction after a year, uh, after eight months. Here on the left side, you can hardly see the spray. This, this is the paint, yes? The two lines means that here was a right wheel of the harvester and forward they go in. And here on the right side, in this slide, it's hardly to see, but this was another area to take uh, uh, soil samples. I mean, the difference for, for someone who doesn't deal with forestry, it's, it's difficult to spot with their eye. <coughs> so here you can see, the, I mean, there is, there's really no, no difference, yes. Basis, basically speaking, uh, we took the samples, three soil samples in each uh, fragment under the wheel of harvester, one, two, three, and uh, one and a half meters away from that in undisturbed area, one, two, three. So the differences in the soil samples within one uh, plot were bigger than between uh, a rat place and the undisturbed uh, area. So what I would like to say with this, with this presentation, uh, we, maybe we should be a little bit more calm with the uh, impact of uh, forest machines in the forest. Um, maybe it's not such a bad solution. Uh, maybe we can accept that. Maybe the uh, economic issues let us to use it widely. And uh, yeah, basically speaking, let's cut the forest if you want to. Thank you very much.